Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the HG Super Fumina. This kit is so unique. This is definitely like, I know I say that for some of these kits recently, like the Hyakuri and the HG Mobile Worker. Some of these kits I've been reviewing lately have been quite unique, but this one I think we can all agree is definitely uh, probably the most unique kit that we've seen uh, in the Gunpla line for many, many years, I think. So with that, that just automatically, I think, makes this kit super interesting just because of its uniqueness. Now a lot of people have not really been into the kit thinking that it's kind of creepy or whatever. Like I said, I think I mentioned that in the unboxing. Uh, I don't really get why people think it's creepy. I mean, it's just a plastic model kit. I mean, yeah, it's of like a girl robot, but I mean, I don't really think it's all that creepy. Now, uh, what we want to talk about in this video, though, is just how the kit is, just in terms of what you're getting, uh, what you can do with the kit, and all of that. So let's get into it. First thing, uh, I just have to thank Mind Phoenix Hobby Store, as always, for supplying me with this kit. So big thank you to them. This was, uh, like I said, one that I was very interested in checking out, uh, just because of how unique it is. I definitely could not pass this one up. And I gotta say, for the most part, I'm pretty happy, pretty much happy with it. And I think there's the great thing about this kit is that there's so much that you could do with it. And like we've, we've already been seeing, it's only been out for uh, about a month now, I guess. And we've already been seeing a lot of really cool customs that people are making with this kit. There are a few things that I don't really like about the kit, and we'll of course talk about those momentarily, but for the most part I think it's definitely worth the money just because of how unique it is, and overall it's a really great kit. It does have a few flaws um, that do make it a little bit more tricky to work with. They're not really flaws, but they just make it a little bit more difficult, so if you're just kind of the casual builder, I think you'll be fine with it just as it is. But uh, there are a few things that if you wanted to fix, uh, you might find a little bit difficult. So let's just go ahead and uh, just talk about the kit overall. Everything goes together pretty, mu pretty much like a Gundam model, but like a, a regular Gundam model. But of course there are things that are going to be quite different. The, like, the arm joints, the shoulder joints as well as the uh, hip joints are a little bit different from usual, so that's one thing. Otherwise like the head, the elbow joints, the knee joints, uh, the wrists are all pretty much standard, like uh, slightly different shaped, but pretty much the same kind of engineering. The ankle joints are quite disappointing, though, how those are. That's basically polycaps, and it's like two polycaps that fit together uh, to make the ankle joint, and they, they really don't allow for much movement at all, so the ankles are not really going to be able to move very much at all, which is pretty disappointing. Uh, but everything else moves pretty well. The rubber parts that are used for the uh, waist, the white part of the skirt, as well as this white uh, thing on the top of the head, really disappointing that those are rubber. I really don't see what the point of making those soft rubber was because they don't really bend and they're like not really supposed to bend. Here at the skirt, I could see if like there was a lot of waist movement there, but even without that piece, or even if that piece was hard plastic, it wouldn't really hinder any movement at all. So. Um, just really a mystery why Bandai did that, but I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that soft rubber is harder to work with than just the regular plastic, so that's just kind of disappointing. This kit does, of course, have quite a bit of stickers, so we can, uh, well, I guess not really that much, but there are definitely some noticeable stickers, so let's just go ahead and take a close-up look here at the face, because this is one thing that I've seen people complain about being creepy about, is that the face is pretty emotionless. I could see that, I guess. I mean, it's just a pretty, like, uh, not too, uh, not the most expressive look here on the face, uh, to be sure, but I don't know. What I don't know what, I mean, they kind of had to make it a pretty neutral face. I mean, if they make it like a angry face or like a really cute face or something, I don't know, something too much of one particular expression, then I think people are not going to like that. Then, like, if it only had like a angry face and I wanted to have it in, displayed in like some cute pose, it wouldn't really work. So I think they just kind of had to go neutral just to kind of uh, try to please the most people that they could. I personally think it's fine. I don't really think it's all that creepy. Um, interesting about the face is that uh, we can see the sticker here, like around the eye. The, the actual eyepiece is a sticker. Now one thing I do want to show you guys, we, we get two different eyepieces in there. The one that I have in there now, the eye is just flat and you just stick the sticker on there like that. Uh, we do also have this different eyepiece though. This one actually has detail molded into it. So if you wanted to just paint this by hand, that'll be really easy to paint because you have all that uh, detail in there. Just mold it in. I guess that's upside down. It should be like that. But uh, 
Hopefully you guys can see that well enough on the camera. So that's really cool. Um, this is, whenever I get around to painting this kit, this is probably the one I'll use because then I can just paint that. But uh, just for this, for the time being, I have these eye stickers on there. And then uh, around the eye, they wanted to give you a sticker for like the kind of eyelashes, eyeshadow around the eyes as well. So what they did, they kind of made it so uh, it goes around the eye and then like the sticker goes off to the side as well. So you can see it here on... Uh, and this is the other thing that's mysterious, is that we get a lot of extras. Uh, we got five sets of eyes and then five sets of these uh, ones that go around the eyes. I don't understand why we have so many. If, any, if you guys know, tell me in the comments. I don't really personally get it, uh, but there must be some slightly more logical reason than whatever I can think of, which is no reason. Uh, but so you can see how uh, the ones that go around the eye, it goes like off to the side. So it's like actually over on the side of the face. As it is now, you can't really see it too much because the hair mostly hides it. But um, if you look closely, you can see that it is a little bit weird to see the sticker. It like goes more off to the side of the face. A little bit um, interesting. And then uh, here on the side of the head, on this side that we have this uh, kind of uh, headpiece, there is a, a pink sticker there to make up the ear. On this side we have the ear is just molded as part of the face, but on this side it's molded as part of this white part, so we uh, had to put that like flesh tone sticker on there for the ear. Other stickers that we have here is these two uh, like oval pink things here. Those aren't numbered and they're not mentioned. As far as I could tell, I couldn't see any mention of those stickers in the manual, but I'm guessing those are supposed to be like on our cheeks for like the rosy, like rosy, like blushing cheeks. I'm guessing that those are, that's what those are supposed to be used for. Um, I'll stick those on a little bit later in a different pose, but I think those are just like the kind of thing, like if that's the pose you want with the kind of like rosy cheeks, then uh, use those stickers. If not, those stickers aren't really going to be used for anything. So, um, that's that. Uh, like I said, the head just moves around uh, like normal, so you can move it uh, pretty nice up about like that, down just about that far. The hair does move uh, side to side, independent of the ribbon. The ribbon is just on there on its own. And then like I said, this top part here on the top is that soft rubber. Here is the, a little flag on the top of this. I didn't cut that off yet because this is supposed to be round, so it'll take a little bit more sanding to make that round, but we'll cut that off a little bit later. The hair does have a seam line down the middle of it there, but with it being hair, I think that's not really going to be very noticeable or like really bother anyone really. The shoulders are kind of interesting, this piece that uh, the shoulders are on. It allows for a really nice movement. You can see we can bring the arm all the way up like that with, with pretty much no problem at all. So it can raise the arm like totally vertically, and then it can bring the arm forward, uh, pretty well as well you can see like that it's just on a ball joint uh, inside of there but the shape of the piece works pretty well this is interesting here uh, the beam saber handle I expected to like be able to fold up but it doesn't it's just fixed in this pose and one thing I didn't notice in the unboxing is that we didn't get any beam saber effect parts for this so you can't actually use those beam saber handles like as beam savers, it's kind of disappointing. Uh, if we take them off, which I believe it should come off, no problem. Here you can see the the shape of that piece. It's not perfectly round. It does have a little notch in there. So you could plug a beam saber effect part into there. Uh, I'm not sure. You have to find one if you have an extra one laying around that's the right size. Otherwise, of course, just with a little bit of modification, you could use this as a beam saber handle. But uh, just out of the box without doing any modification. Uh, there's no beam saber for that. The other thing that I was surprised about is that this these parts on the arm I thought would be able to open up just like the GM cardigan uh, and then you could have the little Gatling guns in there but they don't actually. You could open it up, of course it's the same two pieces uh, well not the same two pieces but the same kind of design of the two pieces there and we actually have the Gatling gun pieces but again this won't like as this kit is designed it's not designed to actually hold those in there but with a little modification you could do that um, it'd be really simple to modify that I think if you wanted to have this uh, actually inside there and use actually using these so you have these parts uh, two of them if you want to use uh, you could just simply modify that otherwise it's, they're just extra parts you can use on something else uh, the elbow joint is just uh, double jointed there and you're going to get pretty good movement out of it. You can see a seam line here on the forearm though. Definitely going to have to work on that. Uh, the wrist is just on a ball joint. 
The, I, the hands are re really nicely designed. The open hands look quite nice. We do also have uh, two holding hands, as you can see here. Uh, so no closed fists, just holding hands uh, or the open hands there. And it's quite interesting that we even have holding hands considering, like I said, we can't hold the beam saber handles. And then we have our rifle, and the rifle has its own dedicated trigger finger. So here's the rifle, the same as the GM cardigan, but of course the hand is different. Uh, we, so we have a trigger finger hand for the rifle. I guess what you could do with a left-handed open hand is have the left uh, holding hand on the secondary handle of the rifle, but having a right-handed uh, ho right holding hand is really not going to serve you any purpose with this kit unless you use some other parts from a different kit. So uh, kind of mysterious there. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something. Someone can let me know in the comments, but as far as I can tell, uh, there's nothing else to do with that. Now moving down to the waist, the actual waist piece under this skirt, it, there is a flesh tone piece there it would like that has a belly button in it and everything, kind of weird, uh, considering that you can't see that piece at all. And there goes the head, that's kind of creepy. Uh, when you move the uh, chest back a little bit, you can see a little bit of midriff there, uh, but really it's kind of odd that they even made that piece like as a skin tone piece inside, because like up underneath you can't see up there really. I know this is kind of weird, but just try to... Uh, keep in mind this is just a robot toy figure uh, model kit. Uh, anyway, so this uh, rubber piece just fits on there and yeah, it's rubber. I don't really understand why, but you can see like the problem with rubber parts is that cleaning the nubs and uh, is not easy to do at all. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but this thing definitely shows nub marks and it's really hard to get rid of them. Uh, I personally don't know the best way to get rid of the nub marks on these soft plastic parts. If someone knows uh, a really good way to do that, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to share that information on my Facebook page or Twitter or something uh, to let other people know as well. Uh, that's that. And then these, this yellow skirt armor fits into the rubber piece and not really well. As you can see, there's like this gap. Uh, it's quite... Uh, unsightly. I don't really like it, of course. You can you can do certain things to fix that, uh, but just out as it is, it doesn't look that good. Uh, so these uh, parts do move a little bit, but that's just because they're just plugged into this uh, skirt armor. So there's the one back piece, two pieces on the side, and then the front is one, two, three pieces there. Uh, now the legs. The uh, upper leg is just all white, so we have a lot of stickers there, and even the uh, kind of underwear there has those pink stickers and the pink stickers on the uh, waist piece don't fit like re really right uh, they're kind of like meant to wrap around but they're not like really designed well to do that and of course for the parts of the pink stickers on the thighs as well those aren't going to stick like wrap around the shape all that well Here you can see like on the back even uh, one of my stickers is getting messed up from uh, just being on there incorrectly. So your best bet is going to be to paint this and I'll, I'll just paint this uh, later whenever I go ahead and paint up the kit. And then there's one black sticker that's going to wrap around uh, the left leg there like that. So the hips are going to be allowing some pretty good uh, articulation here. Uh, front and back is going to be limit. Uh, front is going to be limited by this uh, skirt. So you'd have to hike up the skirt a little bit lower with some modification to be able to get the leg uh, pretty much any higher than that. But the knee is just on a double joint, going to give you about that much movement. And like I said, the uh, ankle armor is really weird and I think just really uh, badly designed. You can see it's two uh, pieces that fit together like at an angle. So they make the movement uh, very difficult, kind of, and then especially like once it's plugged onto the leg, it pretty much doesn't move at all. Uh, you can rotate them, uh, but that's really going to be like the best thing that you can do with the ankles. Uh, any movement out of that is going to be pretty tricky and not really going to move much at all. So those are pretty much just kind of static there. This piece on the top also is not really meant to move. Uh, the whole ankle armor itself, again, just doesn't really move at all. It's just stuck on there. So um, kind of disappointing. So that's pretty much it. Just overall, uh, some good points, some bad points. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I don't know. That's it. And of course, we do have some more accessories. We have, uh, I guess I forgot to mention here, the legs do rotate in the middle of the thigh uh, like that. So you've got some uh, rotation there if you wanted to do that. Now, of course, uh, you guys saw the extra hands and you saw the rifle. Then we also have this backpack. 
which uh, the uh, the mechanical arms are the same as from the GM cardigan, and these cannons are the same as from the GM cardigan. The shields are obviously new, they're smaller in size, and then uh, the backpack part is new as well. But it just fits straight onto the back, like so. And there you go, and of course you can arrange this uh, any way, you could put the rifles on the side and the shields on the back or whatever, you can have the shields kind of more up or something like this, if that's how you want it to display it, you know, of course whatever you want to do, this is just how it, how it says to have it in the manual. So that's just how I've got it temporarily. And then we also have our, these uh, kind of beam effect parts, and these just fit into the shield. Uh, so under the shield, we've got a little slot there. This is just going to fit in like this. And then when that's in, it's just going to look like that. So pretty cool look, actually. Uh, it does look quite nice. And with the just clear green uh, piece there for this little ribbon on the front, and then the clear green for this effect part, it's like just enough of that clear green to make it look pretty cool. Uh, so that's nice. And yeah, we have two of those, one for each side. Uh, and then just the last thing, uh, well, I guess there's one more thing, is the base, of course. We have this base. It's the same as with the uh, Hyakuri, but this piece of the top is new. This is different, as you can see, like with the little stars in there. And this just plugs up underneath the backpack. There's no hole in the waist section. I think uh, that'd be a little bit odd. Uh, so it plugs into the backpack. And it works very well. I think uh, no complaints from me at all here uh, with this base for this kit. It works very well. We'll see that more here momentarily. The last thing though is uh, this here. I In the unboxing I thought this was all just one piece that fits like inside the head. But what these are actually two uh, little clear pieces that you're supposed to put over the eyes. I haven't put them in yet because this is the kind of thing that like you want like when you paint this kit this is like the last thing you do is just pop these into the eyes. Uh, these look like the kind of things that once you put them in, they're hard to take off and then like, or they might fall out really easily or they will definitely easily be lost. So I haven't put these in yet. I'm going to put these in like last. So I'm just going to keep them on here uh, for the time being. But yeah, these just pop into the eyes there to just give them a more uh, shiny eye look to them. So cool that we have those, uh, but I'm not going to use them quite yet. One more thing I also wanted to be sure to show you guys was a comparison here between uh, the Super Fumina and the GM Cardigan, just because they're obviously sort of the one is based on the other. Uh, and I wanted to have them just standing next to each other, but the Super Fumina, although it is able to stand without the backpack, once you have that backpack on there, it's really a difficult, pretty much impossible to get it to stand just on its own. Uh, for me, anyway, I, was, I couldn't get it to do it. Uh, mostly... Uh, not mostly, well mostly due to it being back heavy with the backpack on it now, but also just because the ankles don't work very well, so uh, I just couldn't get it to stand up, so I've just got it on the display stand there, but it's just barely off the ground, there's only like one centimeter uh, off the uh, top of the mirror there. So anyway, you can still get the idea, even if it was just standing on the on the flat surface, same as the GM cardigan, it would still be quite a bit taller. So it is a very, very tall kit. You can see it's uh, basically more like the height of a 1-100 scale model kit, which is pretty cool, considering that the box for this kit was really quite small, and the price is quite low, but you're getting a pretty sizable kit out of this, so it obviously doesn't have a whole lot of stuff. The GM cardigan is obviously much more bulky, just in terms of its uh, design. But the Super Fumina is definitely taller, so it's a really cool comparison uh, with the two of these next to each other, just how they're so similar and yet very, very different. So it's a really cool look, I think. So while I think there's a few things that I, that I would consider design flaws uh, in the kind of the way that they've engineered the kit and the way that they produce the kit, overall I think it, it's fine. It's it's probably even more than fine. It's a very very, very good attempt, first attempt on Bandai's part. Now, like I said, they have done a, a girl Gundam kit kind of before. It was a long time ago, like in the 80s. Uh, so pretty much this is pretty much like the modern Bandai's first time ever trying this. And I think they've done really well. If, this, if they're going to have any more kits like this, I highly doubt it. I think if they do... Uh, ever do any more kits like this, uh, it would probably like be like a kit form of a Gundam Girl design, and which I would 
not be I would not argue with that at all. I think if Bandai decided they were gonna do like a whole new line of like HG uh, Gundam girls, I would totally be into that. I think those would be some really awesome models and we'd see some really awesome builds out of those. Because uh, we have lots of all sorts of like garage kits, resin figures, uh, and like uh, PVC figures of uh, different girls and things like that, all sorts of characters from all sorts of series. But I think uh, it would be cool to like kind of combine uh, that, like building those kind of girl figures along with building Gunpla, which a lot of us obviously are into if you're here watching this channel. So uh, I think that would be cool. I don't really expect that that's going to happen, but I think it could definitely be a really uh, interesting thing for Bandai to try. Now I do have to make uh, basically the same argument that I made with the Hyakuri, and it's, it is kind of nitpick nitpicking considering that you don't have to use this base that's included at all, but uh, one thing that makes this uh, posing this kid difficult is that the base is not really the best. It works just fine and it is really great that we have it. I think this kit definitely needs a base, same as the Hyakuri. Like it's just the kind of kit that absolutely needs a base. Um, but of course it's not going to work as well as an action base one or two. It's a very very simple and limited uh, base that we've got for this so it will work for a certain of amount of things but if you want to get more dynamic, more interesting with your poses and things like that uh, you're going to be a little bit too limited I think for the most part with just this base you're going to need to use uh, some other different base for this, but that's not to say it's totally without possibilities. And like I said, very glad that we actually have it included. But yeah, it's just it's not really great. So that's just about gonna do it for the review of this kit. Um, is this kit for everyone? No, definitely not. Of course not. It's really only gonna apply uh, or appeal to some people. It's definitely not going to appeal to everyone. So uh, of course, everyone's entitled to their opinions. What you like, what you don't like. If you like what you see though, I would definitely recommend it though. If, if you think it looks pretty interesting, if it looks like maybe there's some, if you get some really good ideas for some custom that you want to do, like I said, we've already seen some really cool customs of this kit modeled in uh, other different female characters. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities with it if, if that's something that you'd be interested in doing. So if you like what you see with it and if you think you have a good idea of maybe what you want to do with yours then then I would definitely recommend it. It's not very expensive a kit. It's like I said very unique. It's something that Bandai's really never done before. So I think that just alone makes it worth at least checking out, buying one and then like you know if you end up not really liking it enough to really go ahead and do all the work to paint it and all of that, you know, it's not that bad out of the box. You can just kind of have it around or you know, do whatever, I don't know, but it's definitely worth at least checking out, I think, just for its uniqueness. So, with that, that's going to pretty much do it for this review. I, I'm i happy with this kit. I think it's really cool. I'll definitely be looking forward to working on this more later. Um, cooled some uh, cool weapons and options and things that we have for this. Uh, it's definitely going to work better on a, a regular action base instead of this base. Uh, but, yeah, again, I think just overall, goodbye. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions or comments about this kit, leave those down below. I hope maybe some of you guys can uh, help answer a couple of the questions that I had uh, that I mentioned earlier in this review. So that's pretty much going to do it, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.